Okay, guys, uh, I thought I'd do this uh, kind of different this time, I'm trying to go through the effect in different stages, stages and upload scenes at those different stages to kind of help someone that maybe doesn't know a lot about ice and particle systems and just try to help a new user along, basically. So this effect is going to be the assemble from pieces effect. You know, you have, you have the screen is blank and you have these pieces flying in from outer space and, and, and they're just assembled into an object. So, uh, so to do that, uh, I, I've to start here. I have a cylinder that I have connected to a particle system. Um, we have our little glue and our initiation all set up. So this is ready to be animated. So, um, what we need what, to to do this effect, what we want to do is take the particle and move it along the polygon normal. It's the respective polygon normal. So this, so this particle here would move this way, and this particle here would move that way, and we'll kind of disassemble the piece, and that'll be our starting point, and then we'll animate the piece coming back together. So to do that, we need to get the polygon data, or we need to get the mesh data into the particle system. So let's do that. Let's just get our cylinder, and this is the piece of information we want. Polygon normal. We'll grab a set data. We'll plug that in. Call this self temp. And we'll try to plug that up. It's not gonna let us. It's not gonna let us because this information is outside of the particle system. This information is from another object altogether. So it doesn't know it doesn't know where to put it basically. It can't put it on the particles because it is no. It has no way of knowing how many pieces of information is going to be coming from this uh, external mesh or external object. So that's why they gave us the build array from set. And what that does is it takes um, a set piece of information and builds an object context array, which is exactly what we need. So if we visualize this, if we visualize this information we can see it is an array of information, array of the normals. And this array of normals is from the cylinder, this, but displayed in object context on the point cloud. Remember, this is the point cloud ice tree. So we've, we've now brought our polygon normal information in to our particle system. But right now it's just sitting on our on our particle on our point cloud. It it's not connected to any other particles. It's just an object on the point cloud item. So what we need to do is connect the individual normals with their respective particles. And the reason we can do that is because of this. So let me hide you. I'll show you. This is the particle IDs in purple and the polygon indexes in green. And as you can see, they line up perfectly. So with this array of normals, I can the green is the green are the polygon indexes. So in this array, index zero points to this first item here. Well, you know what? I can use a select and array, select an array feeding in the particle ID and I will get the same normal because the particle ID and the polygon indexes line up perfectly and they're ordered in the list that way. So we're going to use that fact to our advantage to get and we can really get any mesh data we want to in our, in our particle system this way. So let's do that. Let's do a get data. We'll get the particle ID. And then we'll use select an array. And we'll take that array and say, use the, take the array of normals, use the particle ID to look up that normal, and that'll put it into particle context. Temp two. So actually I want to do this different way. Bring you down. Well, I like to have that. Yeah, we'll put that as temp two. This is temp one. Bring this down. Okay. 
so the first one, no, let's display the second one first. Show values, numeric, move you over to the right, make it purple. This is our list of normals. Now let's see the list of normals put into particle context. So the green, you can see, remember, this one was polygon index zero, and this was particle index zero. As you can see, particle zero has taken the first item out of here. I think this was one that's taken the second item out of here, so on and so forth. So we've taken our polygon normal information and put it into a per particle, per particle, per particle context, I'm sorry. So <clears throat> that's how, and, and, and using this setup, we can get any piece of information we want off of the uh, off of our original mess and uh, and put it into a per particle context. So since we've got that working, what we want to do is start want to start our particles particles off uh, disconnected because we're going to reassemble the mesh. So we can use this execute on emit, and what we'll do is just add we'll just add the polygon normal to the particle position. We get a get particle position set particle position. Do an add. So we'll take, remember, all of this represents the polygon normal. And we'll take the particle position, add the normal to the polygon position, which will move it along the length of the normal. Set that back into our polygon position. And when our particles emit, that's what we want them to do. Bam. So our mesh is exploded. Now, if we wanted it to be exploded more, we could multiply. We could multiply this normal to increase this to increase the length of the vector, and that'll make it be exploded more. But for for this part of the video, th that's good enough. We've just moved the uh, particles along the normal, and then what we'll do is we'll animate it coming back together. We'll we'll change its vis visibility so nothing's on the screen, and then maybe we'll start at the top and bring it back together. So what I'll do is increase the density of the cylinder since we're not displaying any data anymore. Uh, I, since I changed that, I have to go back. Wait a minute. Sometimes it gets out of sync here. There we go. You have to select it. If that ever happens, you have to select the point cloud. And I think that gives the point cloud um, a priority in being resolved. And then that catches everything back up. So. Let me go back to the first frame and maybe make this 10 just to make it more interesting. So yeah, so we'll re reassemble this back together um, in the animation. As a matter of fact, let's get some more horizontal slices. So I think we'll do four. Yeah, that'll make it more interesting. Okay, yeah, so we can bring this back together. All right, so I'll stop the video here, upload this video and this file, and then we'll continue on with the assembly process.